Hey everybody, this is Hercules Penix, founder, curator, docent, and gift shop employee of the Hercules Penix Academy of Comic Book Studies. Today we're going to be looking at Animal Confidential, an odd little anthology comic put out by Dark Horse Comics. I believe this was put out in 1992. And uh, it's kind of like the brainchild of Jerry Prosser, but it's it's just a very odd anthology. Just it's a hodgepodge of various things um, all thrown together. And um, we start off with an Arthur Adams cover, and this woman is being uh, threatened by the shadow. It looks like uh, the rabbit from Sam and Max. Steve Purcell, the creator of Sam and Max, was Arthur Adams' studio mate. So that's his little shout out to his buddy, I guess. Not the best Arthur Adams I've ever seen. So it's all just like weird little stories involving animals. Just a really odd idea for an anthology. And uh, all these, the, these contributors who are like just from, I don't know, disparate parts of comics kind of. I don't think of them as going together. But this was the only issue. And uh, we start off with The Spy, written by Randy Stradley. Sorry, Randy Stradley, Dark Horse Poobah. He's a big wig at Dark Horse Comics. Drawn by Eric Vincent, uh, I guess most famous for his Alien Fire, a science fiction comic in the 80s, and various short stories. And uh, this is some of the best Eric Vincent artwork I've seen. We start off with Uncle Creaky here. He's this narrator. And he tells us this crazy story about the ship that's uh, it's about to go down, crash onto the, the rocky English coast. There's a monkey on board. And uh, he's freaking out, of course. And this guy's just like, get your hands off me. Let go of me, you stinking ape. And he takes the monkey and kicks him out into the ocean. And then right then, a giant wave hits the ship and kills everyone. So somehow the monkey survives. Um, Pierre is his name. And he makes it to a beach in England. And all these Englishmen are just like... What the hell is this? A mermaid? A deformed seal? They've never seen a monkey before. They have no idea what it is. I wanted to check something here. Yeah, it's 1705. So, of course, no one in England has ever seen a monkey. Well, most people haven't. So they run down to the uh, local minister. And, you know, he's, they figure he's smarter than they are. And they're like, what, what is this guy? And he says, it's a demon. You gotta burn him. So they tie him to the stake. And then a magistrate comes by. And he's all like, you silly men, that's not a devil. And they're like, if he's not a devil, what is he? And the monkey's all like, ah, oh, they'll listen to this magistrate. He's smarter than them. I'm soon to be free. So the magistrate says, what be he? Why, it's as plain as the nose on your face. He's a French spy. <laughs> and then they hang him instead of burn him. I guess that's the punishment for being a spy. So I guess he... <laughs> he was. Without Pierre's report on the English troop movements, the army of the French monarch Louis XIV was inadequately prepared to meet the English. In fact, Pierre was the last of France's anthropoid spies. After that, the French would rely on the Poodle Patrol. But that's a story for another time. So this is a, just a... This is like this kind of story that would just be in Dark Horse Presents. But I guess it's animal-centric. Pretty fun. Pretty good. And, you know, his art's pretty nice, Eric Vincent. But just so weird. And then, and then we get this. This is Jerry Prosser uh, writing. Uh, he's the guy who, um, what did he do that? Did he do that exquisite corpse comic? 
he always drew kind of wrote. I'm sorry, he was that writer. He always write kind of kind of like creepy dark stuff. And the art is by. Uh, let me double check. I think it's uh yeah Jack Pollock. And there's some really nice art. This guy looks like Ross Perot. This guy kind of looks like Regan. But these are gangsters. And uh, this is just a gangst gangland story from like the you know twenties and thirties. But there's this hitman horse. And there's, there's actually a bunch of animal gangsters in this comic. There's this weird alternate reality where there's uh, various scofflaw animals. Mr. Sparky runs the gambling syndicates. Ray is in charge of the sanitation racket. Ray the Rat. McTavish is in charge of prostitution. And there's Lefty, our antagonist. Contract hits. The cigar smoking uh, fish with the little derby. Bubbles is in charge of bootlegging. Really nice. These uh, beautiful photorealistic uh, kind of pencils. So basically, the lefty killed this mobster, Nails, and uh, his his buddies get revenge on Lefty, and they take care of him. They take him out. There's poor Lefty. Really nice art. I think Jack Pollock did other stuff for Dark Horse Presents, and I've seen that guy around. And then this is another thing, so odd, Mark Martin. And I think around this time, he was probably doing Hyena, or maybe that's later. That's probably later. But he does this page of fake ads, and uh, they're just crazy. They're pretty funny, actually. Oh, this is nice. It's always nice to get a Rick Geary page. Authentic pet miracles. Sebastian attracts currency like a magnet. Jinx ascends daily. <laughs> I just love this puppy. Every day he just floats up upward. Rowdy glows by night. Oh, love his sense of humor. So this is someone I only know through Dark Horse Comics. I don't know if she was a had a comic strip somewhere. She has a very cartoony style. And uh, Dark Horse took a liking to her and would put out these like little collections of her work. She would also appear in some of their anthologies, such as this one. And uh, it is kind of fun, her style, kind of goofy, old school cartoony. And this is, uh, I was a teenage hairball. And this kitten's very unruly. And uh, one day she takes him to get fixed. And at the end he says, since then I've bellowed considerably. Here we get another Jerry Prosser, um, Jack Pollock collaboration. This one's about a circus. It's told by Ed the Geek. He's the narrator. And it's Mary, the elephant that could not hang at first. So there's all this intrigue at the circus. The two um, owners, the brothers, I guess they uh, disagree about what to do. Um, one of them decides, listen, we have one big act that people are willing to pay for. We gotta sell off half of them. And that act is Mary, the the acrobatic trapeze flying elephant and her child, baby. They're the only act the circus anyone gives a damn about. 
But also because of that, people want to buy them. So they're so poor that they're like, let's just sell baby. And the other one doesn't like it. Here we see a Mary and baby. It's really nice cartooning. Looks so Disney-esque. And I guess some gangsters get involved and they shoot baby and kill baby. There she is dead. And Mary just kills like five guys that day. <laughs> she just stomps them. The three guys from the company that were going to buy Baby and their muscle. She stomped the three guys so hard they had to be buried in the same coffin together. They couldn't even extricate them from each other. So she actually goes to trial. There's a trial for an elephant. And uh, the jury condemns her to death by hanging. And the line breaks a couple times. It takes a while to kill Barry. But they eventually do. And we get another Rick Geary. Just about this little poodle who's spoiled. And then one day, his his mistress dies. So there's no, there's an empty dinner bowl every night for a while. And uh, we see the poodle looking from the poodle's point of view at this big fat foot. And near the end it says, now it seems I'm the queen of the tabloids. And the headline is, Pooch devours owner's foot. But pray, don't judge me too harshly. And then in the back cover, we get more of those Mark Martin ads. These are really good. Free government surplus mystery oil. U.S. government created oil to poison pot plants. Oil has no effect on pot, but keeps chit chitting shiny. And you see, you see these locusts with a nice shiny carapace or whatever they call it. Mark Boyne's a funny guy. So there you have it. A very odd anthology, Animal Confidential. It's got definitely enough good stuff to hold on to. And uh, this is definitely quarter bin fair. So uh, you won't have any problem finding this. And I'm sure it'll be cheap if you're interested. It's, I think your your collection would be just fine without it. But it does have two Rick Geary pages. I don't know if they've ever been collected anywhere else. I imagine they have been, though. And I really like this Jack Pollock art. So for that reason alone, yeah, I'm definitely holding on to this. Very lackluster Earth Adams cover, though. I almost wouldn't guess it was him, except for the face. The face and the hair, very Earth Adams, but I think he kind of dashed this off. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, I hope to see you next time here at the Hercules Pettix Academy of Comic Book Studies.